Vicky Slade is leader of BCP Council and joins me now. Vicky, good morning. Good morning, Steve. Um, and just before we get on to that, it's a happy anniversary today for BCP Council. It certainly is. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a year today since um, BCP and Dorset Council were born. So uh, it's not, not a happy birthday for us, but... Um, it does show what we've achieved in yeah. in just a year. Who'd have thought a year ago we'd be talking about this rather than being? Well, I, I guess know. I guess exactly. Bing... we won't be launching our video to celebrate. <laughs> Bing, Bing Collection will form a part of this. Talk to me first of all about the the volunteers that you've kind of pulled together for this volunteer hub. So we um, we realised really early on that there was some great stuff going on, on on social media and in local communities and we needed a, a sort of a central place so people could feel that they were doing something that was systematic and that we had systems to help people with getting their shopping where they perhaps, you know, weren't able to give people money. That's, uh, you know, not, not a particularly safe thing to do. So we've, um, in the space of a week, set up a call centre, which is staffed by um, people from the council whose job is no longer being done, library officials, environmental health officers, those sorts of people who are, you know, whose job is, is, is currently ceased. Um, and they're working uh, seven days a week, eight till eight, to take calls from people who are uh, stuck at home who perhaps don't have neighbours or, or family who can go out and get their shopping or or just have somebody that they can speak to each day. Pretty impressive response from the community and I've got to say pretty impressive from the response from the council to, to pull all that together. It must have been you know, pr- pretty tough to mobilise that quickly. It, it was. Um, the IT team and the customer service team have been incredible. Um, we've got 1,700 volunteers who are all signed up. Um, we've got about 50 staff at the moment who are, um, you know, rotated to, to be part of the programme. And it's working alongside the government's Operation Shield. So the, the one where the really vulnerable people are, are being contacted direct we're then sort of taking on the ones who are um, who are needing something that's non-standard. These food parcels the government are sending out are, are brilliant, um, but they don't cater for you know particularly religious um, diets or right. people who perhaps are celiac. Um, so we need to to make sure people don't slip through the net. Uh, the phone number for people who might fall into that category or might know somebody who does oh three hundred one two three. 7052. I don't know if you have an overview of the council as a whole at the moment, Vicky. How much are you affected by uh, absentee absentees caused by uh, illness or self-isolation? Do you have a statistic for yeah, how much you're we're, down? We're, it's probably about one in six. Um, so we are moving lots of people around. That's why we've had to cease things like green bin collection um, and... Uh, um, you know, some of the restrictions on access to places is partly because we can't keep people safe. Mm. Um, so we are, we've, we've got everybody ready to move into those critical services. Obviously, almost everyone is working from home. Um, our IT team built over 300 laptops um, over the space of five days, because as you'll know, as a new council, we weren't really set up to to do remote working. All these things were due to happen over the next two years. Right. So we've had to escalate some stuff. But uh, the team have been incredible. We have a daily um, teleconference of all the departments every morning. Clearly, we've got the same issues as everyone else. You know, a lack of of, of PPE for for care workers and child protection officers. You know, that's really worrying. Um, But we're working as, as hard as we can to keep everybody safe and keep as many services going for as long as we can and make sure we can get the money out to the businesses that, um, you know, that they're entitled to through through the, the government programmes and the same with the most vulnerable individuals as well. Uh, t- just talk me through that then. So you say a lack of PPE, is is it that it's not easy to get at the moment? There or you're not none. getting the support? There, there is none. Wait, we just haven't been sent any. Um, you know, so one of our councillors yesterday contacted me and said he's been sent 100 masks from a, a friend in China. Um, so we're getting those into the council. We're, we're having to, to be in the same situation as the NHS, only a step behind. Um, and teams are, are, are having to use what they can. But there are people who we think should have 
access to masks that haven't had them. And that's obviously, you know, making them very, very cautious about some of the work that they that they need to be doing. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if this is going too far ahead of ourselves, but we often hear about council budgets being stretched. And I wonder to what extent you expect to be impacted by all of this. You know, making that many laptops that quickly can't be easy or cheap. No. Uh, re- <laughs> dropping car parking restrictions for some uh, workers, you know, that's going to uh, limit the amount of money coming into your budget through that for a, for oh, a period of time? it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, you know, council budgets are tight at the best of times. The budget that we wrote in February, you know, it, it, it is torn to shreds. Everything has got to be fundamentally rewritten. Um, you know, we, we take... We only get 1% of our income from central government. The rest of it is council tax, business rates, car parking charges. You know, there are people who can't afford to pay the council tax. There are a lot of lot of businesses who, who are um, not paying their business rates. We will get that reimbursed by the government. Um, but, you know, how many businesses won't come out of this in the same state? Um, and obviously, our car parking income is is virtually zero. So, you know, that, that is really impactful the government have said don't worry you know we'll help you out but the government are are doling out money aren't they left right and center we don't know at the moment how much the councils will get and you know that income it it pays the social worker to to go and um, you know check on a child that's that's in crisis or you know the care home placement or the fuel in the in the refuse vehicle it's it's not money that's not needed every penny is spent and of course we have responsibility for the coroner's service and the mortuaries, you know, that sounds pretty morbid, yeah. but that's an incredibly important service right now. Vicky, we'll uh, stay in touch. Good to talk to you this morning.